Welcome back to the platform. Our guest is Brian Cannon from Pseudo Echo. Brian, thanks again for coming in. Thank you. Warwick was touching on before the song that we all know and love in Australia, which is Funky Town. How did that come to be? Like, what was the first inkling of you thinking we're going to do this, this song? Yeah. Well, it was one of those songs that when I was 18 and I was, uh, you know, going to nightclubs and um, checking out the latest music and the latest scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> the on. original version of that song was being played. Right. Coincidentally, the DJ who was playing it was Molly Meldrum. Wow. Yeah, always handy. And I used to go to this little venue, uh, the Croc, in the northern suburbs. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, the Crocs and Park Hotel. Yeah. And that song sort of just stuck with me for years. I always remembered it, you know, fondly from those days. And then maybe five, six years later, a friend of mine, um, he was a DJ, and he, we were just having drinks at his place, and he sort of going through his record collection, and he held that up and said, remember this song? Wow. you got to remember when you're, when you're 25, uh, you know, five years ago, it's quite nostalgic. <laughs> Back yeah. in the old days. Yeah, especially, yeah. And um, we were playing it and having listened to it, and then um, the next... Sound check. I was at, you know, a few days later, we were doing a gig and I was at the sound check. I started playing it. I sort of went over to the keyboard and sort of started playing a bit of a bass and then played a bit of keys. And the guys were joining in and sort of jammed it. And we said, hey, you know, this is a really easy song to play. It's only got about three chords and, uh, and the lyrics are a no brainer. It's the same verse every time. You can't forget those. <laughs> you, just can't. Big <laughs> you never go wrong with that. So we, we threw it in the set uh, at the end. We did it as an yep. encore. And um, no, it, it. It, it just went off. We couldn't believe it because it was almost satirical. We were almost take, taking the mickey out of it, you know. Right. Like, um, so we kept playing it in our uh, encore and then um, somebody uh, did a recording of it somehow. It wouldn't have been on a phone because it didn't have them in those days. Yeah. It must have been mm -hmm. just a desk tape from the, from yeah. the console. And um, gave it to Lee Simon at Triple M. And um, it was E on FM, I reckon, back then. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, we shared a building with the with the Eon FM, with our management company, with the Wheatley organisation. And uh, we were just walking down the corridors one day and Lee walked past and he stopped and he said, you've got to release that song. It's a smash. We didn't know what he was talking about. We said, which song's that? <laughs> he said, Funky Town. And it went, oh. and it went and, worldwide. And, and, you know, like fr from that one little moment, um, I think Glenn, our manager, had a you know, huge vibe on it then. He said... This is this could be good. So we want to sing, uh, want to sing it now. Yeah, <laughs> gotta make a move to a town that's right for me. Da, 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 da. So Sound just like the record. That's not bad. So what, what did that song do for you then? Like that was like number one. It was and epic. Huge and yeah, it was. It was. It, it got opened, you more gigs. Opened. It's got us for more sure. gigs, more money. Yeah. But it opened the door um, internationally for us. That was the best thing that happened. Um, we yeah. we toured the US, toured Europe, toured Japan. Um, it was incredible. Just, just off the. Um, ironically, the song hadn't really peaked when we were touring, so right. we didn't get the best out of it that we could have at the time then. But yeah. later on, we did. And a, lot, so. a lot of the Australian bands they make it in America, so that's great. Yeah, yeah it was. For you. It was good. It opened a lot of doors, yeah. so it yeah. was great. Well, I know people love to see it. We actually have footage of it, so let's uh, let's go down memory lane, Funky let's, Town. Let's see have a crack. crack. You'll be okay. song. Put your hands together for Brian. <laughs> was that fantastic? I'll give him a clap. <laughs> but my whole life, my career was probably looking in the mirror, <laughs> kicking 100 goals, take a mark of the century and see my picture uh, on a billboard. Yeah, yeah. What was yours? 
Similar. Similar? Similar to that, yeah. You know, just seeing... Uh, um, and probably another great thing is getting people to your stadiums is a, is a benefit, yeah, isn't it? I think it, it, it is. One, one moment was pretty funny was when, um, after the fact, some ten years later, and um, the casino had been opened up in Melbourne. It was in f full flight. And yep. um, we did a gig at the Mercury Lounge there. And oh, um, there, it was it? the first gig back in years, and it was sold out. Did yep. three in a row. And I remember going up the escalator, and then there was a big mural on the wall of all these bands, and in the centre yeah. was a gigantic big picture of Sudo Echo. How wow. was that? So I, I thought that was pretty uh, pretty impressive, and I um, told a lot of my family and friends to go and have a look at that. <laughs> Makes you feel good, doesn't it? That's great. <laughs> Mate, well, one thing we wanted to ask you before you go is, like, what advice would you have like for young music artists of today or anyone out there chasing a dream? Up and comers. What, what, what would you tell them? Um, well, I guess I'd say uh, don't, don't imitate. Find your thing. Be bold. Be different. Yeah, stand yep. out. Do, do what the others aren't doing. Right. That's, what, that's what I'd say. All right, man. Well, look, that's thank fantastic. you so much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure having you in. Yeah, uh, up next, we're doing something a little bit random. We found a pretty cool story online uh, in the Bahamas, a young girl called Rexy Roll who runs an airline. So we spoke with her on Skype. And that's coming up after the break.